This girl shows up with a magneting koozie for the lift and a pomegranate beer. All right. Mm -hmm. All right, you ready to learn some things today? All right, 2010 Dodge Challenger. Miss Brittany's car here. She's going to learn how to do a brake job today. So if you're in this video, we're putting some new rotors and new pads all the way around this puppy front and rear. Uh, I will have chapters below, so if you want to see the rears or just the fronts, uh, jump to where you need to go. There will be links in the description to all of the parts and tools used. And here we go. Step number one, uh, get it up in the air and get the tire off. Brittany, you have one lug remaining. I took out the other four for you. So have at it. <laughs> here, look, if it's ever stuck like that, just give her old palm bunk. There you go. Nice and loose. There you go. Hold your horses, please. All right. Once you have the tire off, first step number one is to get the brake caliper off, right? So if you see back here, we have two bolts, one on the top, one on the bottom, okay? So I'll get the camera back here, one on the top, one on the bottom. This is your first time doing brakes. So you're gonna take those out and this thing will wiggle off and you can just set it up here at the top. They are indeed 13 millimeters on the top. We have broken them loose. So you can just take them all the way out with your hands. There you go. One and two. Voila. So now this should wiggle off of here. So you should be able to just pop this off. We may need to get a little small flathead. So if it's sticking a little bit, you can take a flathead under here and you can just kind of pop it like that. Just pull your caliper right off. Just set it up here for now. All right, so your pads, they just click into these little fancy retainers here. So you can see you still had, this one was very worn down in the back side here and unevenly. And then this one actually had some life left while we're doing them all because there's no point in taking this apart without doing them. Your rotors, so at this point, if you're just doing a pad job, right, you want to feel your rotors. If they have grooves and they're not smooth and grip on this edge, they either need to be turned, which you can do at any auto parts store. You can take them up there, they'll resurface them, or they need to be replaced, and they'll make a measurement and tell you if they can be turned or if they need to if you need to buy new. If too much material is gone, they can't they can't get them in spec. Um, so in our case, we have new rotors and we're gonna continue pushing forward. So this bracket here that holds your caliper, this is the next thing that needs to be removed. If you look on the back side here, you have two bolts. They look like about 18 millimeters. They're gonna be 18 or 19s on the top and bottom here. These are gonna have Loctite on them, so they're gonna be a real booger to break loose. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab a zip tie. We're gonna hang this caliper up by a zip tie so that way it can't fall whenever we inevitably jerk on this thing. In purposes, uh, all right, so two 18 millimeters, they are 18 millimeters out. So you can just remove the bracket, it just slides right out around your rotor, just like that. Okay. Oh. Oh, I think that cap, that cap was just hitting the very edge of it. So we're good to go, or it might just been this rust right here, but yeah. All right, cool, so the rotor just pops off. Let me see if this sits in here. We can decide right now. Does this pass through? Yeah, it passes through. So this, this is fine. It was just literally caught on this rust. I just didn't smack it hard enough. So you don't have to take that off. You see the cap missing, but you don't actually have to take that off. You can get the rotor off without it. So it was just, it had a bunch of rust built up, which we're going to clean this up here in a little bit. All right, so this is the correct rudder. So with a drill and slotted, if you put your finger closest to the bottom and follow the line, you want the line to be drawn towards the back of the vehicle. So they're not labeled, that's how you do it. This will be left hand. If you have regular rudders, it doesn't matter. You can put them on either side. So just like that. That's right hand. That's right hand. Yeah. You said that's left hand. Uh, my. Uh, <laughs> Passenger side, right hand. Okay, my bad. You're right at that. Yeah, edit that we'll start out. over. So this rotor is no, correct for this it. side. <laughs> if you put your finger at the bottom of the line and draw it, it needs to point towards the back of the vehicle, meaning this is the right hand rotor. There you go. Good, good catch, Kyle. <laughs> you got the bolts all cleaned up. Now we're going to throw some blue Loctite on them. A dab will do you. You don't got to get crazy with it. I like to just press it in with my hand like this. I'll slide this bracket into place. All the way to 
go. So I'm holding it with my thumb and my hand, and then I'm just gonna kind of use whatever I got to work with here to try and get this puppy just thread started. Just like that. Because the problem is, is the rotor it wants to pull itself out. So this helps hold it. And then once the tire goes on, that actually is what presses it and holds it for good. You want to get these nice and tight. There's probably a torque spec, but I give it the uh. That's my torque spec. All right, so we got the lock tie on them. We're good. The caliper bracket's back on. So before you do the actual pad change, what you want to check is these slides. So like, see how this moves nice and freely? So especially up north, right? A lot of times these will, like the grease will come out and they'll get kind of rusty, so they'll stick. And when that happens, a lot of times the back pad's going to wear super thin and get stuck because these can't slide and move with the caliper on it. Um, but these are good to go. These ones are moving just fine. So where are your new brake pads? All right, we got the Detroit Axle front brake pads and hardware. Even comes with little don't squeak on the grease. So, first step, replace the hardware in the caliper bracket. Rawr. <laughs> just make. So you just lay the new ones in just like that. You're in. Um, now, real quick, this is a super handy, fancy tool. There will be a link in the Amazon link in the description. So this is a brake caliper depressor. So this thing just works like a ratchet, right? So you can just ratchet it like this. So we're gonna put this in the caliper because you need to press this piston. You can also put an old brake pad in this way and then use a C-clamp to do it. But this thing is super nice. So let's see, is this in the right direction? Fuck yeah, it is. So you just literally put it in here. Just start ratcheting it. Once you get it tight, it'll just ratchet all the way. Come on, jinkity, jinkity, jinkity thing. There it goes. Boom. Fully depressed caliper. All right, so now it's as simple as putting these brake pads into the slots, into these clips we just put in. They just press right in like that. Doesn't have to be a whole heck of a lot. Just a nice thin little layer. This helps prevent premature squeaking. Slide our caliper back on. Is it very obvious? simple as putting the tire back on and moving to the other side so miss Brittany right there she's gonna do the other side of the road now and then we will pick up with the rear brakes we're gonna leave this tire off for now uh, just in case she needs to walk over here and look at something it's a good way of learning